Now, you've been asking me to do this for absolutely years, but I've been waiting because I thought it's very appropriate now because the shed, this workshop, the home of the Colin First channel, is now 10 years old. Now, its exact birthday is a little bit hard to put your finger on. I started making it on the Christmas of 2009, and the first picture I've got of me actually building something in here was on about March the 5th. 2010. So there was a couple of bits and bobs. I've got various construction bits. There used to be a blooming egg glue sat here when I was making it because it snowed while I was doing it. That thing I was making was a flamethrower which I put on the back of a <laughs> on the back of a scooter. And on the 26th of March, I got arrested and had a firearms charge hanging over my head. What a great way to start the shed story. Now what I'm going to do? I'm going to work my way around the room. And then we'll talk about each individual little bit, get some tools out, show you how they work, a couple of other little modifications and things I've done so you can kind of just see how it works. Because this is kind of like the ultimate small workshop. There is a lot of massive things that have come out of this small shed. A lot of people have said on the years, why don't you get a bigger place? I'm like, because I don't want to. I like my little shed. I like the fact it's got three layers of carpet. Because everyone's like, why have you got carpet? It's nice on the knees and it's warm. So, this is like my home really, and let's uh, let's have a little tour. Hey, we're gonna go straight over to this corner over here. Right, so we're starting over here at the lathe. Now, I'm not gonna talk too much about this because I'm actually replacing this soon, and this version, this Bailey PL1022VS, they don't actually make it anymore, so it's pointless talking about it. But this size of lathe is kind of perfect for this shed. You can't go much bigger than this before you step up into like the mega industrial floor standing beast. Because this whole thing is 1.1 meters, the actual base plate, it's pretty good. Now, I didn't used to have one this big. When I first ever started on YouTube, I had one of those tiny little mini lathes that you get. And to be fair, I know a lot of people look at them and think they're just like a junk low light toy. They're a great starter lathe. And I, you know, if anyone wants to get into machining, they are pretty good. You can get a lot of tools and a lot of you know, accessories for them. So I would highly recommend one of them. Also, we've got the Bench Grinder, the world's best pencil sharpener. I've mounted it on the door so it doesn't take up workshop space. And you can open the door and you can be bench grinding outside. Now, the most unique thing about this corner is under the bench, down here. So, under the bench, got my plasma cutter. This is a Lincoln Electric PC210. Regular viewers of the channel will know that I made a modification earlier in the year. So rather than just pulling the torch out and using it in the workshop, I've actually made a hole in the side of the shed and then I've got a fold out bench on the fence out there so I can lay the sheets down. It's all earthed up, you can just use it straight away. It's generally a lot better idea. Now, this one has actually got a compressor built into it so it doesn't need to be connected to an airline, but mine's hardwired plumbed in the back so I'm not constantly having to click it in, click it out. It's just there, ready to use. You just switch it on, go outside and cut it all up. Fantastic. Now, you can't see it, but behind here, there is a hydraulic pump. So down here, I've got two quick release hydraulic connectors and then essentially what's just a uh, car trailer port. And then behind all these wonderful bits and bobs is a 240 volt hydraulic pump with its own oil tank and built in bypass system. So you can't over pressurize something and it knacker the motor up, it just automatically whips around and then goes back to the tank. Now essentially, what I use this for is my press. Now if you click in the top right corner, there is a video of how I made this Now I installed it all. So you just push them on, get the cable, put that in, and there you have a full automatic 10 ton press. And it's got bypass on it so you can set the pressure so it's not 10 ton or nothing. You can set it so it's only pushing a little bit. And of course you've got a speed controller so the whole thing just doesn't go and crush whatever you're doing. So it's fully controllable. And this is actually a really useful piece of kit. For years I never had a press but of course for broaching keyways, pushing bearings out and of course more recently I've used it as a bender. Always you can put six mil plate and all sorts of things under this and it'll just It'll just bend it up no problem whatsoever. You've basically got access to hydraulic power. I've made things in the past like my scissor lift shoes so you can test things like that. And also my uh, arm mounted crusher as well, 
Also, all the initial test versions are all tested off that. Wonderful piece of kit. That pretty much sums up this corner. I've got my trays with bits and bobs down the bottom. I've got my bearings, my solenoid valves, my electric motors, my little electric bits and stuff. All nice and neat down there. Now, the only other interesting thing in the corner is these things. These are my manual Wolverine claws. Now, these were the first ones I made before I made my automatic ones. And these are pretty cool because you can just slip them off like this, get them on like that, and then you're just like, Wolverine! <laughs> oh, the sound they make is so awesome, isn't it? <laughs> yeah, they're pretty cool. When people come round, they like playing around with these. Over here then, sunshine. Next up, we've got the workbench, the vice, and the welders. Now, the workbench, it's a simple thing, but it's one of the most important things. All the projects pretty much start on it. So when I made this shed, I made sure they were nice, long, sweeping, wide workbenches. This one's 600 mil deep, this one's 900 mil deep. Now, I've got a bit of carpet on this one, you know I like carpet, because basically when I was making the flame throwing guitar, it was nice to be able to work on something on the bench and not have to worry about it getting all scratched and stuff. And that's actually stayed, that's quite a nice little touch. Now, make sure it's fixed to the wall, no gaps down the back. You don't want to be working on something, bolts roll off, drop down the back, you're searching on the floor for stuff. No, screw it all up, nice and solid, boom! Very important. Right, vice. Okay, vice, pretty simple tool. Again, mega important. This one's pretty cool. It rotates, flips round, it also goes side to side. It's got the jaws and it's got this pipe clamp, but most importantly, it is bolted down solidly to the bench. Now, one of the tools which I always use in the vice, which people ask a lot of questions about, is my little bendy thing. So, this is a six inch vice brake. Holds itself in with magnets onto the jaws. So useful. Now it comes from Stakesy's metalwork machinery and there's quite a few things I'm going to say which come from Stakesy's. He's a good old boy, I'll stick a link to him in the description. It's not sponsored by him, but he just sells a lot of cool stuff. You can get your bits of plate, you just stick it in and it puts a lovely bend on it. Now essentially, it will do, it will do thin stuff, it will do long stuff. You can even do stuff longer than the actual bit. You can do it in sections, look, move it along, do another bit. Move it back again. Do another bit. Move it back again. Do another bit. Move it back again. Like so. it'll do up to about three mil thick, up to about twenty-five mil. So if I shove that in there, look, it's a bit harder, but it does do it. Look, and this is great for making brackets on all sorts of things. Oh, lovely jubbly. Now. The vice and the bench also double up as the earth for the welders which are down here. Right, there's a lot going on under here. All the earth clamps are clamped up at the back on some little prongs that are welded down from the sheet of metal I've put into the bench. Uh, the stud welder ones are uh, connected up here. I've also got a jump lead connected to the bolts on the vice. So if I'm welding not on the bench and out exterior, I can just plug this in and then that will earth it all up. And then welders, I've got an SWP Invert 200 ACDC TIG welder, so this one will do aluminium as well. It's pretty cool, I've had it eight years, I've not had any problem with it, I quite like it. And then I've got Lincoln MIGs, I've got two MIGs actually, this is the smaller one which I got for doing the land speeder because it was easy to, to move around. And I've also got a bigger 200C one, but I have this one all the time because it fits under the bench a bit more and I don't clap my leg on the torch bit sticking out. And then we've got the stud welder. Everyone loves a stud welder, always asking questions about the stud welder. So this is a Taylor stud welding CDM9. It will do up to 8mm studs and this does some pretty cool stuff. Yeah. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, so you've got a stud gun. Within the stud gun goes these little inserts which the studs fit in. You can get them that range up from 2.5mm right up to 8mm for this machine. The studs, you can get steel ones, you can get stainless steel ones that come in different lengths. You even get internal threaded ones, you can do like ones that look like nails. Quite versatile, even like zip tie clips I think go in here. So you pop them in the end, you set the depth so it just sticks out, and then basically normally you get the two mole grips, the two earth clamps, clamp it on either side of your workpiece and then pop this in the middle. But to kind of tidy cables, I've welded mine to the bench and I know where the middle is. It's probably not quite so good. It's nice and tidy, Colin. And then you put it on here, make sure it's nice and flat, and then pull the trigger with your safety squints. And there you are, a stud. If you get the hammer, look. It just bends the stud. 
it is brilliant. But also, you can have like a piece of like polished or brushed stainless. Pop it on. And it doesn't blemish the other side. So you can have like a piece of polished metal, you can weld something to it, and it doesn't discolour it. Now, if it wasn't for this machine, I would not have made the Sekiro uh, fold out shield. It is dear, but I love it. Right, that's pretty much this bit. We've got all the bins and stuff. We've got all my cable nonsense in that one. 240 volt power drills, cordless stuff, some routers and whatnot. But under here, it's a bit of a mess, but there's some cool stuff under here. So mainly what we're doing here, we've got the welding bottles. We've got Argus Shield for MIG and Pure Shield Argon Fatigue. They're stacked up here on their side because they don't need to be upright. And also I can get to them to switch them off and I can get to the regulator still, which is great. Now, when I first built the shed, the air compressor used to sit under here, but it's not down here anymore because of the blooming thing keep cutting in the noise. So that's down in the bunker shed. But the copper pipe, which is like the airline, which runs all the way underneath the bench, down to the plasma cutters, the other plasma cutter, of course in the garage, the Swifty, the CNC one, that's all still in there. And it's just basically there's hoses all over the garden which with airline fittings on. Now the other stuff I've got down here is kind of like my more specialist tools, but I will demonstrate. Now, I've not had these that long, but these welding jigs from Fireball Tools are absolutely awesome. They're proper solid aluminium. So if you do a lot of fabrication, a lot of frame building, you're welding stuff together, you don't want it to move when you're welding it, get a set of these, clamp it on, beautiful! Right, next up, we've got the tube notches. Love these. Of course, having just built the two metre bicycle, you've seen this one in action. So I've got a JD squared notch master, and I've also got this one made by Bailey. Can't remember what it's called. I'll stick it on the bottom of the screen. Right, I'll show you what they can do. This is basically your standard tube notcher. If you want to notch some tubes, stick a hole saw on of the appropriate size, screw it through, it does a perfect job, it's very good. But this does a couple of extra things. This top bit that clamps the thing can slide up and down, so if you've got anything on the tube that you can't clamp to in a certain position, you've got a little bit of movement in that. Of course, it's got the angles, you can do all the angles, but one of the things it does do, which most of them don't do, is if you undo this, you can actually lower the center point of where it notches. So you can actually do offset holes in a tube, as I will demonstrate. Right, bit of WD. You want a bi-metal hole saw. Lovely jubbly. Look at that, look. Slots, beautiful. But you don't have to just do tube. You can use flat as well. Put a bit of flat bar in. that you can notch that get a perfect fitment on them brilliant machine now the other one now this one does everything the other one does apart from you can't clamp flat or different shaped pieces other than round in it but what this one does do is it has a much wider angle range that will only do up to like 45 degrees this will do the full 180 and also it's quite clever in how it clamps the pipe it's like this kaleidoscope sort of clamp. Now the advantage of that is you can clamp on a corner. So if you wanted to put a notch on the end of a bend, the other one can't clamp it properly because it can only clamp flat surfaces so it will kind of go all a bit manky. Whereas this one, you can clamp stuff on a bend. So if you put that in there, tighten it up. So you can come in the old saw, notch the end out. You can also slide this bit back and forth if you need to get further away from it. Excellent. Right, next got the old ring roller. Lovely little tool. How many times have we had ourselves pulling stuff round cans, barrels and whatever to try and get it into shape? Yeah, you can get there, but it's never that good. Always a bit kinky. Giggity. These aren't really that expensive and they do a perfect job. They'll do up to three mil, 25 mil wide. You can do, I've done two inches in it actually. You have to kind of do both sides. Tighten it up to whatever and then just turn it. And it's that easy. Oh, look at that. Beautiful. Loving it. And while we're in the mood for bending, <laughs> yep, I've got my little slip roller. Now, this is a 300mm throat one. I've got a 600mm and a 1200 one. But this was the first one I bought. And although it can only do quite thin metals, it can do one mil steel across the whole width of it. But if you, you know, if you make it smaller in the middle, it'll do thicker. But, you know, I still made the first ever pulse jet I've ever made with this little slip roller. 
put it in, you turn the handle, and then there we are. It starts to bend it. Now, if you stress it too much, it either won't go through, or these gears, basically, the teeth snap off them. Put it back through the other way. Oh, don't whack yourself in the nuts. And as you can see, you get a nice little bend. Beautiful little tool. However, if you can afford a bigger one, I'd get a bigger one because the, the bigger one you get, the more useful it is. Because this is, it's nice. It fits under the shelf, but I very rarely use it anymore. Now, back of the shed, we've got all my red trays that have all my fixings, my bolts, my little jibbly jibbly bits in. That's all it. Also, we've got my hole saws, we've got my tap sets, we've got my squares, and we've got all my clamping kits. Clamps. Now, for light clamping, these are all right. They're like silicon guns. Clamp them up. Bosh, pretty simple. If you want to hold something really firm, though, not really that good. So, I've got these better ones. Now, this lot has all come from Stakes's, and he's now, he's, he now knows I'm doing this video, and he has been very generous and said if anybody buys any of the stuff, off his website that's included in this video, put furs into the promo code and you'll get some money off. I don't know what yet, he doesn't know. He's a funny old boy. So what we've got, we've got these really heavy duty strong arm ones. Now these are pretty awesome. They've also got these little attachments so you can clamp onto pipe quite nicely. They're proper good, they are. They will hold stuff really, really well. Now he also does a massive wide range of Magnetic clamps, obviously, you know, when you're welding, doing other bits and bobs for holding stuff, sticking bits up. We've got ones with funny angles on. We've got the ones with switches on that you can turn on and off. Now, there's these ones. These are pretty cool. If you're kind of putting like a plate on the edge of a bit of pipe, you've got the angle bit here which sits on the pipe, and then you've got the flat bit or the 90 degree bit to hold it on. Excellent, Colin. And there's bigger ones as well of them. Then, of course, you've got this. This is for holding stuff down on your welding table. So you put that on there, put the bit of metal down, and then it'll hold it on it. Very nice. Now this, these are pretty cool. These, these are new, I've only just got these. If you want to drill a hole through a piece of pipe and you haven't got a pillar drill and you want to get it dead straight, you've got to check your drill in you to see if you're going in line. Well, you get these little jigs, look. You clamp them down onto the top of your pipe or box section if you flip it around the other way. And then basically you put your drill through them. This is proper hard metal, so the drill won't cut into this. And then it holds the drill bit completely in 90 degrees to your workpiece. So you screw down there. Excellent. Another little cool tool, center finding ruler. How awesome is that? If you want to quickly find the center, this is a ruler where naught is at the center of the ruler and then it works outwards in equal ways so you can easily find the middle of something. I mean, why did we struggle before we knew all this? Now also, we've got my inset metal folder. Like I said, there is a video of me making this and demoing it, so I won't go into too much detail. But the advantage of this is, is A, it's always there, ready to use, but you've got the whole workbench to lay your sheet of metal on, slide it through, and then bend it up so it's not all flopping around in midair. And it is very nice. You clamp it down, and you just turn it up. And it all sits nice and neatly out of the way. It's pretty cool. It'll do about one mil, across the whole width, but you can you can do thicker stuff if it's a bit smaller. I like. It's a worthy addition to the workshop. Now this bit is kind of where I store a lot of my bits. This all down the bottom here is all bits of metal. We've got angle iron, we've got flat, we've got square, we've got round, we've got aluminium, and then the end two bins have just got like bits of components and stuff in. Plastic feet, wheels, tyres, you know, things I've collected that you think, I don't really want to chuck that away. I might need that at some point. And you sometimes do, that's where I store it all. Electrical stuff, these have got all sorts of just random stuff in them as well. And then we've got my stainless steel bin. And then down here, in here is all like wood chocks and things like that for like kind of balancing stuff up. This is what you miss if you go somewhere else because you haven't just got that, oh, Where's that little bit there? Oh, I think I've got some of that. Oh, there's a little bit of that left over. Beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. Also in this corner, other than the TV that never gets switched on and I don't have the remote for, we've got the shearer. Now, I often forget about this tool, but these are actually really useful. They will slice through a bit of 25 by 3 mil flat, no problem. You bend and twist the edges a little bit, so, you know, if you're wanting something perfect, you don't use it. But if you just want to chop bits up quickly, this is actually really handy. And also, if you wanted to cut like a big radius like that on a bit of sheet, this is a bit of 1.2 mil stainless, it actually makes a quite a good job of it. Even pull it round as you're going along. Oh, first. Oh, mate. Oh, look at that. 
and it just sits here and it's nearly like out of sight, out of mind. Lovely jelly. And then you just stick that on the belt sander, clean the edge up and wallop. Much quicker than a grinder, much neater. It also does rod. Oh, what a, what a lovely little tool. <laughs> Now I've got my welding mask, I've got my TIG welding mask and I've got my MIG welding mask which is a little bit dirtier and then also there's a Spanish YouTuber called Cocha, uh, I think that's what his claim is and he's made me this steampunk one that actually has fire coming out of it. Now if you want to see that working I'll stick the link in the description you can go and check it out on his channel. I've got the bench grinder, sharpening drill bits and also sharpening the tungstens on the TIG welder which I sometimes like to use a cordless drill for. Now we've got Various trophies, most of them are from Outrageous Acts of Science. You've probably seen me on that show. I think I've got nine, possibly even ten in the end. They don't always let you keep them because they need them for filming with other people. And then I've got the Webby Award, which the hover bike won. And I never did actually get sent the proper trophy, so I've only got the one that I made. And then, of course, I've got my plastic hand. You've all seen the plastic hand. We love the plastic hand. And this little fella, you've seen in the background... When I was a plumber, I used to have him in the back of my van and he was always peering out the back doors. As you can see, the sun has bleached him quite a bit, but when I left plumbing, I took him with me. I get a lot of questions on Instagram sometimes when these things pop up in the back of pictures. What are these, Colin? Well, they're actually radius finders. This one's an internal one, that's an external one. Say if you've got a circle like that, which is way bigger, like a massive oil drum or something that you can't physically measure the radius. You get this, it bends like that, look. And then you basically push that against the radius, tighten it up, and then there's like a scale on here. That says, what, about 360, 365, 730-ish? Yeah, 735, 740. And they are, so you can find the radius of a circle out or a, or a massive barrel without actually having to measure it. All the writing on the wall here is the formula to make the combustion chambers for the turbojet engine. So that's been written on there nearly since day one. And then we've got the last corner. Now, we've got my other sheet metal folder, which goes in the vise. This one will do slightly thicker material, but it, it's just, it's hard to pick up. It doesn't sit in right. I don't like it. And then, of course, we have got the final tool. We've got my bandsaw. This thing is fantastic. I used to have a cheaper one that you can get, you know, one of the Clark ones. They're about a couple of hundred quid. This one I think is 12 to 1800 pound. It's a lot more expensive, but it will cut dead straight every time, all the time. Most of it is down to the fact it's got this little slow reducing thing on, so you can alter how fast it drops or how slow it drops. And I think that takes all the pressure off the blade, obviously. And the blade's obviously a lot bigger than the cheaper one. It chops stuff. You've got the angles, because it doesn't, the angle of the angle, you're not changing the, the angle that you clamp the material at, you're actually changing the bandsaw angle. Because some of them, you kind of end up clamping your, your piece of work at an angle, and then it just doesn't want to clamp properly. Whereas this, the whole thing moves. 45 degrees, lowers itself down probably. It's just a brilliant piece of kit. Right, I think that just about covers everything. There's a lot going on in a space that's just five meters by three and a half meters. Now, there is marks and stuff everywhere that tell stories. There's burn marks from where I set fire to stuff when I had a turbo barbecue in here. There's cake on the walls from the cake matic We've got burnouts on the floor from when I made the world's fastest dodgem. There is bits everywhere which tell a little funky story. Now, most things are in here, but there is some things elsewhere. In the garage, I've got my steel rack. I've also got my big pillar drill. But the one thing I will talk about today is the CNC plasma cutter. The day this thing arrived, everything changed. Now, this is called a Swifty. It's made by Swift Cut Automation. It cuts 600 by 600 squares. Now, all the sheets of steel I've got are all stored in this rack in different sizes. It'll basically do anything from 0 point whatever all the way up to 10 mil thick. Now, I'm not gonna show you meticulously how this thing works because that feels like a separate video, but say if we wanna make some claws, you essentially draw it on the computer, put it into this computer, tell it where the bottom of this sheet of metal is, how thick it is, and off it goes. And then you take it out. There's some slight little bits of uh, burrs and stuff which you have to grind off. But of course, with a little bit of grinding, a bit of belt sanding and some TIG welding. And you've got the quickest set of Wolverine claws I've ever made. These are pretty cool though. Look at that. 
Now, hope you enjoyed the workshop tour. Essentially, the 10 years I've been in here have been amazing. I love it in here. The videos I've produced and put on YouTube have generated over a billion views. And of course, I'm nearly at 10 million subscribers. I can smell the diamond play button coming my way. But um, I mean, that is it's crazy that just one person in a shed this size has generated that sort of audience. So thank you very much. Now, what do I want you to take from this? Well, I don't want you to look at these tools and think they're really expensive. I can't afford them. As long as you've got a workbench of vice, drill and angle grinder and some simple tools, you can make the drift trike, which I did a few videos ago. I'm going to link that at the end of this video, because if anything, that is the perfect starter project. I didn't start with all this stuff. I started with basic stuff. You've just got to go, 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 go and build whatever you can. Right then, see you in the next video. Subscribe. We will be doing firework specials for 9 and 10 million, but obviously I can't do it while we're in lockdown because, well, I need more people, basically. So, see you later. <laughs> you just want to... With these, don't you? <laughs>